Hey guys, it's me again, and I am back with another science assessment. Okay, so you guys just loved the other video that I did on carbon. And when I got this assessment, I thought I would once again kill two birds with one stone. Because, you know, why not? As you can see, we are once again going to learn. But before we get into that, I just want to warn you, if you came here to study or learn new things about this topic, then you came to the wrong guy. Anyways, putting that aside, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you another educational video. Atoms. So what are atoms? Atoms are the building blocks of life. Whoa. Nah, I never knew that. Atoms are tiny, tiny particles that combine together to create the physical world. Atoms are really small. And when I say really small, I mean really small. So how small are we talking about? Well, think about a single piece of hair. There are about 500,000 atoms in the width of a hair. So it's obvious that atoms can't be seen by the naked eye. So that leaves one question, the question we will be talking about today. How do we know atoms exist? Well, I'll tell you how. You see, many, many years ago, atoms were discovered by John C. Atoms were actually discovered by six different people from six different times. Each one of these people contributed towards the discovery of atoms. Their theories weren't exactly accurate, but it was because of these people we know that atoms exist. So we're gonna start way back in 460 BC, where we are going to talk about a man named... Democritus? 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 De 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 democracy? Democritus. That's how you say it. Democritus was born in 460 BC in, in Abdera, Greece. The theory about atoms was first started by Democritus. What he did was, he first started by grabbing a stone, and then he chopped it in half. Then he grabbed that half and chopped it in half again. He repeated this process over and over, and eventually Democritus went, got up to a point where the piece of stone was so small that it was impossible to cut in half. He then grabbed that piece of stone and called it an atom. So this is basically what he thought an atom looks like. From there, Democritus stated that space or some sort of void existed within reality. He described the void as a vacuum, an infinite space that contained an infinite number of moving atoms that makes up the physical world. Now some of you may say, duh, everyone knows that. Well, back then, if you were to talk about atoms, people wouldn't have thought you were crazy. And that's exactly what happened with Democritus. People thought his theory was insane and rejected him completely. Democritus didn't receive any credit for his discovery until many, many years after his death. So the next person we're going to talk about is John Dalton. John Dalton was born on the 6th of September, 1766 in the United Kingdom. John Dalton was a schoolmaster who was a self-taught guy. So John Dalton had a big contribution towards the theory of atoms. And it all started with clouds and rain. Dalton first became interested in the theory of atoms by meteorology. Meteorology is the study of phenomena that occur in the atmosphere, especially the weather. And John Dalton was a meteorologist. Once Dalton studied the weather, he started thinking about the little bits of water that fell from the clouds. So you ask, you can see them, but what were they made out of? Today we know that the atoms that create water is called H2O. Well, that was Dalton's idea. That was his thinking. He said that there was something that we could call H and something we could call O and that they would fit together. He continued his thinking about atoms and explored the world of chemistry. Eventually, he published a book about his new system of chemical philosophy, part one. 
Now you see, Dalton had so much to tell us before he could actually tell us anything, which was why he was only able to publish part one. But even so, part one had 350 pages, and near the end, he finally gets to. It's atoms, folk, and they kind of look like this. And he, he draws out for you the atoms and how they look. He also discovered the atom theory, and the atom theory is. All matter is made of atoms. Atoms are indivisible and indestructible. All atoms of one element are identical. Compounds are two or more different types of atoms. And chemical reactions is just atoms being rearranged. Even until today, we still use this theory. The next person we will be discussing is J.J. Thompson. J.J. Thompson was born on 18 December 1856. J.J. Thompson was the first one to discover electrons, also known as the negative charge of an atom. He discovered this through the experiment of cathode. He also discovered a positive charge in atoms through neon gas. Now back then, no one knew that the atom had a positive and negative charge until J.J. Thompson discovered it. When he noticed that the accepted model didn't have a negative or positive charge, he proposed a model of an atom he made based on the plum pudding. The negative electrons represented the raisings of, in the pudding and the dough contained the positive charge. So this is what his model looks like. The next person is Ernest Rutherford, Rutherford, Rutherford how do you say that? Ernest Rutherford was born on 30th August 1871. He was a former student of J.J. Thompson and was also the one who proved that J.J. Thompson's plum pudding structure was incorrect. In 1911, Ernest performed a series of experiments with alpha particles. Basically, he fired alpha particles through a piece of gold foil. Most of the particles went straight through the piece of gold foil unaffected. But there were some that were deflected at an angle while others ricocheted straight back. With this, Ernest Rutherford discovered that atoms had something called a nucleus, and this was his model of what he thought the atom looked like. The next person is Niels Bohr. Bohr was born in 7th of October 1885. He was also a student of Ernest and was the one who suggested that the electrons in the atom orbited around the nucleus, exactly like how the planets in our solar system orbited around the sun. Bohr's model of the atom was called the planetary model. James Chadwick. James Chadwick was born on 20th of October 1891. He also worked with Ernest. In 1932, he discovered the existence of neutrons. With that, the atomic model of the atom was changed into what we know today. So a quick recap of everything, Democritus started the theory of atoms, John Dalton discovered the atomic theory and the symbols, J.J. Thompson discovered electrons, Ernest Rutherford discovered the nucleus, Bohr discovered the orbital part of electrons, and James Chadwick discovered the neutrons. And after looking at all the previous models of the atoms, we ended up with this. So that brings us to the end of this video. Now, not everything in this video might be true. I wasn't given much time to make this video. I didn't have much time so I couldn't make slides like I did in the last one. So this video was pretty rushed is what I'm trying to say. Which is why there's probably a lot of mistakes and I probably missed out a lot of important facts that I was supposed to say. But if so, um, feel free to scold me in the comment sections. But putting that aside, I still had fun making this video. All my sources are in the description below if you want to check it that out. But anyways, thank you so much for watching and uh, yeah, bye. It's terrible! Horrendous! I'm offended! I'm appalled! So what are we gonna do? Oh, what else? Email it to everybody we know! Good idea.